I'm going to use a plein air painting that I did that I really like very much uh, as a jumping off point for exploring a different um, format and also a different color palette. And I'll change a couple of little things that I, I didn't like so much in the uh, painting. So uh, this is a painting that I did on location and I really liked it. It was the time of day, late afternoon, a time that I love. And I thought to myself, what if I did a painting uh, using this that would be a little bit later in the day? And I also thought about, well, what format do I want to make it? I could make it a long, sweeping piece. I could go vertical. I could use that big, beautiful tree, or I could focus on the grasses over on the right-hand side, or I could go square, a format that I like a lot, which is what I'm going to do today. And um, I thought about also changing the color palette. What if I thought about this being a little bit later in the day, maybe in half an hour, an hour later, because the sun was going down, and we know that the colors change when the sun goes down. So I'm going to start out with uh, my biggest shape, which would be the sky. Hey, and can, I, we, can we just interrupt you here for a second and ask a couple of questions? Of First course. off, um, your camera could be just show that right hand panel just a little bit more. It's getting cut off. Oh. I don't know if you can do that. Oh, yeah. oh there we go. Almost there. the opposite yeah. direction. Okay. Okay. That, oh, that's yeah. probably, probably there. Yeah. Oh. Maybe try to turn it a little bit now. Oh, oh. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> okay. okay. Now there the, the thing I, I, I want you to do, uh, Christine is just mm -hmm. for the people who are watching, who might not be really tuned into a uh, pastel, would you just tell us what kind of paper you're using uh, why you use a toned paper, and uh, just kind of walk us through some pastel as we go so that people can learn what pastel is all about. And and we've got a big audience already today. Uh -huh. Hello, Saudi Arabia. Sure. Welcome. Oh, all right. Fabulous. Okay. Uh -huh. I am using, um, can I say the brand? I'm using a... Uh, of course. Okay. A Canson uh, Mitan. It's a very old uh, style paper. It's not a sanded paper. I really love it. And it's a warm coloring because I'm going warmer with this particular uh, palette. And my working method is to start out with a um, little value thumbnail. And then I use soft, fine charcoal to mass in my darks. Those are the first marks that I make on the uh, paper. What that does, Eric, and everybody watching today, is that it masses in my darks and I work out my composition and movement uh, with a dry media. So um, <clears throat> it, it, those are the first marks I put on the paper. And it's very, very compatible with uh, the pastel. Okay, so once I've got that in, and I did that already for you today, obviously it's kind of boring to watch the uh, charcoal part of it, but I'm going to block in my sky. And I thought, you know, considering the fact that it's a much later time of day, well, not a lot later, but this particular time of day, the light changes so quickly. I call it the edge of the day. I'm curious, people watching, how many of you have actually tried or used pastel right now? Will you put a comment in just so we can oh. know? And uh, so you're going to start this, going to make it an afternoon scene by making that a yellow sky. That's pretty cool. Yes, much later in the, in the uh, day as the sun drops a little bit farther down. Hello, Scotland. Welcome. Hey. People get mad at me because they don't mention the U.S. cities it, um, it, because there's just too many of them. But it's kind of fun to see people from all over the world tuning Absolutely. in. Absolutely. 
very exciting. Now, I am using the side of the uh, pastel for blocking in big, broad strokes. What kind of pastel are you using? Uh, right now, this is a Terry Ludwig. Okay. So you, you, like most people, have lots of different ones that you use? Oh, yes. Yes. I have quite a collection. And I'm sure you know by now, Eric, that it becomes quite addictive. <laughs> well, I've been getting addicted to pastel. Yes, it becomes addictive in collecting pastels, too. <laughs> Yeah, you do need a lot of uh, different colors. For those people who are just starting out with uh, pastel, or maybe you haven't used pastel, is that um, uh, it's a dry media, so you can't mix it the way that you can uh, wet paint. So you do have to have a wide assortment of colors. You can modify colors by uh, layering and... Um, juxtaposing colors and so forth. Uh, but uh, you can't really mix them the way that you can uh, paint. And I also want to warm up uh, this part of the uh, tree. Okay. Quite a bit too. Alrighty. So I want this whole palette to be much warmer. And that influenced this my... This is kind of uh, like a, a, a hands on a chalkboard, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you getting a lot of noise? Uh, well, yeah. you know, it's All funny, right. Eric, when I teach uh, and I have my back to students, you know, I'm, I'm uh, working with a student and uh, I can tell by the noise just how hard they're working. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Now, a um, couple of things I, I wanted to change in the painting that I wasn't that crazy about is this is really my uh, focal point. But because there's so much contrast here, I want to change the value of this and also not have that because I think this is a little distracting all the way over on the side of the uh, painting. So. I want to make sure that these grasses are closer in value to uh, the darker background that is uh, behind them. You know, when you're plein air painting, especially, it's real easy to get seduced by multiple focal points, isn't it? Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. And when I go out and plein air paint, Eric, um, I don't always go out. Uh, with uh, coming back with a perfect painting in mind. Uh, for me, it's a learning experience. Um, you know, as long as I've been doing it, which is uh, quite a while now, I always learn something when I'm out. Uh, do you take an abbreviated set out on, on plein air location? Uh, yes, I do. I have a special plein air box that I use. And um, yeah, I uh, have a selection of uh, pastels that are just specifically for uh, plein air painting. Okay, continuing to block in. I'm still using the side of the pastel. And um, my initial strokes are usually very light because that will allow me room to um, manipulate the um, layers uh, and so forth. And it's only toward the end of the painting that I um, use uh, heavier pastel. Welcome Barcelona. Thank you for tuning wow. in. Oh, wonderful. I was there back in oh, a few years ago. Beautiful city. Yeah. Barcelona. Yeah. Okay, now I just put in the tree trunks and what I did for that little that little uh, tree trunk is I turned the pastel to the side more of an angle so that I could I'm able to use the um, sharper edge of the pastel to get a finer uh, stroke. 
uh, to get these broad areas again and was using the uh, um, side of the pastel in an open side stroke. Okay. What would you say to people who've never tried pastel? Um, I tell them, and I, and I don't know that this is offensive. I don't mean to be, but I tell them that, you know, when we were all kids, we used crayons. And <laughs> so we, you know, we kind of know hand-eye coordination from crayons and these are kind of like adult professional crayons, except they're yeah. not waxy. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because, uh, when I tell people about pastel, it's, it's like we didn't grow up. We get to play with crayons. It's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have questions, put them in the comments. We would love to answer them. Yeah, just. Yeah. I got to tell you, Christine, that after um, after last August, oh, attending Pastel Live, as you know, I'm the host. Right. And I don't get to watch a lot of it because we're doing things in between, you know, getting ready for next segment and so on. But I watch as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started painting in pastels. Uh, I did it a couple of times right about that time because uh, a couple of the vendors sent me some pastels. And then uh, this summer, I've been experimenting with them quite a bit. And I really got to the point where I can knock it out of the park, which I'm really proud of. Wow. And, and I realized that a lot of that just came through osmosis, just, just by having watched other people and everybody approaches it differently. You know, some people use the side, some people use pan pastel, different approaches. And, and of course there's different styles. I, mm -hmm. I found that it was almost like os osmosis that I was able to pick up things that I didn't, didn't realize I could do. Yes, uh, it is wonderful watching uh, other people. And yes, there are so many different ways of using pastel. Um, since it's such a hands-on medium, it's uh, important for people to find out how uh, they should use the pastel. And, you know, there really isn't a wrong way. You know, uh, but I, you know, when I first started before I watched pastel, I didn't realize a lot of the different mark making things you could do. Yeah. Uh, so questions from the comments. Uh, mm -hmm. One is what brand was the square pastel? And the other question is what about dust? How do you deal with dust? Well, um, first of all, uh, the square pastels are generally the Terry Ludwig's. I do also use uh, some great Americans and blue earth. This is a blue earth. That's a smaller square stick. And as far as the dust goes, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a tray that's holding my uh, board that catches a lot of dust. And uh, when I'm using my other much larger uh, studio easel working on a big piece, I'll have it tilted forward so that the dust uh, falls on the tray and not on my uh, painting. Yeah. Some people actually put a wet paper towel on the tray to capture the dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever works. Oh, and by the way, uh, when I want, to, when I see some uh, pastel building up uh, on the uh, surface, this little bit here, what I do is I tilt the board forward and tap, so it will again fall on the tray and I also do not want to uh, blow on it because we blow out. The next movement is to breathe in and we don't want to be breathing in the pastel dust. We want to be around for a long time painting. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. Okay, I'd like to say something about else about the time of day. I've noticed over the years in painting that um, at what I call the edges of the day, um, the values get to be closer together. Where I'll say like at noontime, well, here in Arizona where we have uh, such brilliant sun, um, around noontime, midday, we get um, a lot of contrasts, a lot of strong value contrasts. And at the edges of the day, 
meaning very late afternoon, very early in the morning, the values are closer together. Question, what box do you use when you go outside? Oh, that's a great question. Um, again, there are many on the uh, market. I use something called an all-in-one. That's what it's called. The words are hyphenated. And um, it holds um, a fair amount of pastels. But what I like about it is the lid um, uh, holds my papers and also becomes the uh, support, which I like very much. So I don't have to worry about carrying an extra board. Nice. Here's a little tip. Uh, when you're working on uh, pastel and you're not sure how the particular color that you picked up is going to work in the painting, I put a little chink of it over on the edge of the paper, which will be covered up later on with uh, framing or matting um, so that I can see how it's going to work in the painting right on the uh, surface. Some artists use an, a scrap piece of paper, uh, but I like to see how the colors are going to work right on the, uh, the uh, actual surface I'm working on. So you can see already, it's a different color palette. The color of the paper that I chose, which is coming through in spots, um, influences the overall color palette too, of course. But I'm really wanting to warm this up. Okay, I can hear how hard I'm working on this. <laughs> yeah, you're working hard. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't, well, I'm sure you probably noticed, but um, I, you know, uh, many people will use their uh, field studies or plein air paintings to do a bigger painting in the studio. This one is a little smaller, just because I wanted to try out ideas. You know, we're making it a completely different painting, but using the same motif that of a large tree with the sun going down uh, behind it. So I like to try out different ideas. And then, you know, who knows, maybe at some point I will do a larger version of this. I also do the same thing when I am working in the studio with uh, photographs. Um, I do um, a lot of studio work in the summer, kind of, the opposite of what people do in the more northern uh, areas because it's so hot. Um, and I'll try out different ideas in the studio and of course use uh, photographs in the studio plus my plein air pieces. And I'll do the same thing when I'm working with a photograph. I'll try out different formats, maybe different color palette. We don't need to be confined by our reference. Although when I am working outdoors, I do like to learn as much as I can by observing what's actually happening out there. Very important, direct observation. Uh, when I first started using uh, pastel, I went in as a watercolorist. And um, my goodness, it was uh, a learning experience, but it has been a wonderful uh, ride with uh, pastel. Wonderful dusty trails, literally. Okay, so I am refining some things a little bit, uh, starting to put in some shorter, choppier strokes. Uh, I am an impressionist painter. So I do like to use the um, uh, strokes uh, that, um, you know, describe form in a, um, uh, a textured way. A little bit of 
of light down here. Pressure is so important in pastel painting. It isn't just the uh, different strokes, but it's also how heavily or how lightly the strokes are applied. Sometimes I use a light uh, feathery stroke. Sometimes I use a stroke that is much heavier. And I kind of use both pressures all throughout the painting. Um, pastels, uh, different brands have different hardnesses. And um, when I first learned, uh, I would use the harder pastels first and then use work up to the uh, softer pastels as the yeah. uh, painting progressed. But at this point, I have developed the touch where it doesn't really matter so much uh, how hard or soft the particular pastel is. But that comes with uh, time and practice. And pastels uh, is one of those mediums where it's just so fun to play with. So it's not so much practicing, it's playing with them. Again, we get to uh, play with grown-ups that are playing with crayons. What I really found uh, wonderful about them is that it was at, um, you know, sometimes when I, I'm in the mood to set up and do some oil painting, if I don't have my colors out, then, you know, it's a hassle. I got to put all my colors out. And so what I like about pastel is that I can just leave the box of sticks out and just, you know, set up set up on the easel and do it real easily yeah it's it's instant. yes now let's say a lot of times uh when i work on a pastel painting uh people will ask me about blending and very often um the temptation is to use our hands and go ahead and blend what i prefer to do and i'm doing that this right here is to take a slightly harder pastel and go in all different directions and kind of weave the strokes together. Great idea. That's what I'm doing up in the sky here. Uh, I just prefer to add more pastel. And also, if you get into blending a little bit too early in the pastel, it can look muddy. And we don't want that. And some sky holes. Okay, here's a little tip about sky holes. Um, you can um, use negative space to create um, tree branch. In other words, I'm painting the sky holes and we can see another little branch right there. And I also want to be careful that I have a little more sky on one side of the branch than the other. Just looks more natural that way. And I put in a few over here. Okay. Let's... I'm going to ask people in the comments, just because you can see that coming together so much, I'll just be curious, the one on the right, let's call it warm, and the one on the left, let's call it... I would call it... Um, earlier. Color, um, more literal. Okay, so but let's, let's have people vote so far. Which do you <laughs> like the best, the one on the right or the one on the left? I like them both, but in terms of the, the feel of the color, I'm just curious. I have my opinion. I won't share it. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what people have to say about that. Okay. And again, I um, don't always cover up the entire paper when I paint. I like uh, some of the uh, undercolor coming through. Now, let's see, another difference in this is I was imagining um, the shadows uh, coming, coming up and creeping up into the landscape uh, as they do as uh, the day gets um, later 
So there were, this area in the foreground would be starting to really get to be in shadow. Some cooler colors in the uh, foreground and maybe uh, punch up this area of light that's just streaking across, bouncing up into the grasses over here. So I'm really using my imagination plus what I'm uh, utilizing, and I always do this when I'm in the studio, is um, thinking about times when I've been out uh, and other lighting situations. As I say, all of the time, it's always a learning experience for me. It's a time to really observe what is uh, happening in the uh, landscape. Okay, let's see. I might want a little more, more light sweeping through. I think it's a great exercise because to tell yourself, okay, now try the same painting with a different different time of day, you have to remember these things. Try yeah. to make it up in your head. That's right. And um, that's where the plein air painting experience comes into uh, play. Yeah, Susan I'll is in the, uh, from the Austin Pastel Society is in here. And she, she reminded me that she embroidered me a, a, a hat an art marketing <laughs> hat uh, from the Pastel Society there. Wonderful. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, and an apron. Yes, I still have it. Yeah, wonderful. I need to go back and, and do another thing for them. I if guess I ever make do. it back to Austin. And wear your hat. <laughs> Where, oh, yeah. Wear yeah. my hat. Don't forget that. <laughs> well, they have to get me a new hat by then. Okay. Because I have a bigger head. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh just kidding yes oh goodness now sometimes uh when i get toward the end of a painting sometimes it's just on a whim um i'll pick up uh, a richer color and just throw it in there which i picked up that uh beautiful uh reddish violet and just, just give it a little more jazz. One thing I noticed about pastel painting is when I can look down and grab all the colors, sometimes I'll grab a color I wouldn't think to mix uh, if I were painting an oil, but it just works perfectly. Yes, and a good example is that uh, violet, that beautiful red violet. Okay, now I'm going to show a stroke that I really like for uh, rendering light on grasses, or in this case, light coming through the uh, tree leaves. And what I do, I'm gonna hang on to my board here, is I put it down heavily. Yeah. And then I pull up away from it. Oh, that's a great trick. I call it a flourish. So that really gets intense pigment in there. Yes, yes, it does. And pastel is all about beautiful, intense pigment. I'll get some sparkles in there. The light is not shining on these leaves. It's coming through the leaves. Yeah. And that's when we get the really beautiful, rich um, amber color. I just love that. That gets me excited. It floats my boat. I'll get some. It floats your boat. It does. <laughs> Good thing to have something float my boat since I live in the desert. <laughs> That's right, where you don't need a boat. Right. Well, I live on an island. I live by boat. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Goodness. Lots of it is until days like today when it's raining and you have to go to the grocery store. Oh, goodness. <laughs> wow. 
Well, I would imagine you have pretty good slickers, huh? <laughs> okay, so here's a question from Sue Lips, who says, I have a question for Christine. What side of the Canson Mi Tente's paper is she using, the smooth side or the honeycomb comb textured side? I don't think I saw this answered earlier. Oh, that's a great question. Yes, if you're not familiar with it, the Canson does have a uniform uh, machine-made texture um, on one side, and I don't like it. I like to make the marks myself, so I am using the smooth side. I always use the smooth side of the uh, Canson paper. Are they both sanded? No, this is not a sanded paper. No, it's not sanded at all, okay. Yeah, this is, when I started working in pastel, um, there was not that much available in the way of uh, materials uh, in this country. Um, so we had a German sanded paper and we had this good old Canson paper. And what I like about the Canson paper is that um, it has what I would call a soft hand. Uh, it doesn't have an aggressive uh, surface because it's not sanded. And um, uh, it's a great paper to learn on because it really forces you to learn touch. Okay, now I picked up a blue uh, harder pastel and I'm just going to weave together some of the strokes up in the sky area up toward the top with this. And the contrast between the warm and the cool gives it a nice uh, sparkle. Then, I like sparkle. Oh, we do, yes. Okay, I'm gonna tilt it forward and tap. Okay, let's see. Get a little more warmth down in here. Yes, that's good. Okay, now, um, I'm never averse to picking up my charcoal and going back in uh, some areas that I wanna redefine and restate. I think it's completely compatible with the pastel. And for instance, here, I'm kind of, um, blending but with the uh, soft fine charcoal actually i have enough pastel down so that um it's moving uh the pigment around okay a little more definition up in here where the light really isn't hitting the tree. I also made this main tree a bit bigger. I wanted it to grow up into the uh, painting. Okay, maybe a little more of that wonderful violet. Um, again, I don't blend, but if I need to soften an edge, sometimes I'll put my finger in there and tap. Okay, I want to um, be a little more definite with some of the uh, branches. It's one of those big, beautiful cottonwoods. I think you have those in Texas. Yeah, not yeah, but not at, well. Maybe maybe in parts of Texas, not where I live. Uh huh. But uh, maybe we do. I don't know. Maybe they <laughs> turn that bright yellow in the fall. Yes. Yeah. But they're just wonderful. We, we went to Ghost Ranch one year for Fall Color Week and uh, filled with bright yellow cottonwoods. It was really oh. amazing. Yes. Yeah. This year's Fall that. Color Week is sold out. Wow. That's wonderful.
And where is that? That's going to be in Maine. We're trying yeah. to uh, we're trying to get some um, try. We're we're looking at renting some spaces, additional spaces, to see if we can get a couple more people in. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now let's see what I just did there. Sometimes I use squiggly, scraggly strokes um, to indicate brush, and it's just going around and hitting and missing the uh, paper. I'll show you that over here. There's a kind of a brushy area over here. And it's just using the end and scribbling. We like to scribble too. Hello, Costa Rica. Oh, send hello. Me a, send me a message. I want to come to Costa Rica this year. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Not in rainy season. Right. Right. Not in hurricane season. Well, this is pretty close to where I wanted it to um, get. Awesome. Well, that's about perfect timing, too. All right. Yes, let's call that. Okay, I'm just going to step back for just a minute and take a look. Stepping back is key. <laughs> yes, it absolutely is. Okay, now now we people were saying, I can't vote yet because it's not ready. Okay, so <laughs> left or right, your personal preference. It's not, a, not anything other than just which one do you like best? Yeah, left that's or right. True thing to know okay. go in the comments right now left or right and by the way we're giving away uh a prize from the comments both on the live and on the replay so you have a chance if you put a comment in okay there i'm going to call that you know you know when it's so funny whenever i'm demoing and i say Okay, I'm going to call that finished. I always put in a couple few more. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't. I have, a, I have a painting I've been working on for over a year, almost two years. And <laughs> last night I'm like, okay, I think it's done. And then this morning I came in, it's like, nah, it's not done yet. <laughs> yeah, we always see something, uh, especially when we come back to it there. Oh, that's the joy of it. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you come back on camera so we can say goodbye? Okay. Yes. Let me just turn this here. here All right. Oh, well, that's convenient. Okay. Well, Christine, uh, we put your website in the comments. Uh, I encourage you guys to visit her website and uh, and check out what she's got. And then tell us a little bit what you're thinking about doing on uh, Pastel Live for your demo. Oh, that'll be fun. I'm doing a uh, summer lane. Uh, with a different time of day, a little bit earlier in the morning or later in the morning. And um, it will be leading people into the painting, creating shadows and form to lead the viewer right into the painting and um, using linear perspective and areola perspective and having a really nice uh, summer uh, lush uh, scene that people would want to walk right into. Oh, outstanding. Well, thank you for doing this today. Uh, where can we find you on Instagram or Facebook? Okay. The um, Instagram is Christine Dabrowski Fine Art, and Facebook is C. Dabrowski. Okay. C, letter C, Dabrowski. Letter C. All right, mm -hmm. you guys, thumbs up and applause. You can go back to the comments and look at the votes, uh, but uh, so far it looks pretty even. Oh, a lot of left, a lot of right. Thank goodness. I don't think I don't think those are political statements. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to see you guys at Pastel Live. It's going to be a fabulous event. I'm so excited that Pastel is uh, has another um, venue for uh, people to uh, enjoy. You don't. You can avoid the crowds, avoid the heat, and sit in your nice, comfortable space and get dusty. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to get on an airplane. You don't have to uh, pay for a hotel room or a rental car. So, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, let's just talk about that real briefly. Um, 
we decided it, it was because of this program, actually, people said to us, you know, I was doing uh, Realism Live and, and Plein Air Live and, and uh, Watercolor Live, and people on this program said, you need to do pastel. And so enough people stepped up, we decided to do it. And then we decided, you know, we really need to double down on pastel. We, as you know, we have Plein Air Magazine, Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, uh, American Watercolor, um, Fine Art Today, Realism Today, uh, et cetera. And um, what am I forgetting? Inside Art. So we decided to double down on pastel because we feel like pastel needs all the help it can get because it's such a fine medium and it's already got great help. You know, there's a terrific magazine, Pastel Journal. Uh, there's a terrific organization, IAPS, which brings all the organizations together and has a fabulous event. But we just want to do what we can do. We saw what happened to the plein air movement when we got behind it. We want to help do that to the pastel movement. And so we've launched Pastel Today as a newsletter, and we've launched uh, Pastel Live. I don't think we're ever going to do an in-person pastel event because IAPS does a great job with that. But this is something for the people who can't get in there, which, of course, it's sold out every year anyway. So this is an opportunity for people who, you know, we hear from a lot of people who are stuck at home because of family and taking care of people or just can't travel for whatever reason. This is a great chance to become part of our community in Pastel Life. Yes, it'll be wonderful. I'm really excited about being a part of it. Yeah, we're, we're honored to have you. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's my honor, Eric. This has been fun. And actually, I like the warm one. <laughs> so I may do it in a larger version. That's my vote. <laughs> okay. Well, I like the warm one, too. I, I tend to like warm colors. And there's some research that indicates that people are drawn to warmer colors. If they walk into a gallery and there's two choices, they're drawn to the warmer. Uh, mm -hmm. They may not like it long term, but uh, with oranges and yellows in a painting, it will sell faster. Uh, but whether or not people will live with it as long is, is the question, but it certainly will sell faster. Interesting. Good yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Christine. My pleasure, Eric. Thank you. It's been an honor. Okay.